This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geek show number 501. We somehow got past 500, recorded on August 19th, 2021. Here on Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets that find their way into your home. News, reviews, product updates, and conversation. Tonight, a lot of conversation. All for the average tech guy, or gal in this case. I'm your host, Jim Collison, broadcasting live from the Average Guy.tv studios here. And Sammy, we enjoyed a couple nights, I think, in the last week on the deck. It's had some varying consistency, but not too terrible, yeah. right? The weather has been nice, and we've had good company. So Yeah gotten some good deck time in this past week that that always that always helps we installed we won't spend some, any time talking about it but i went to menards our big box store and bought three fans that we three. put three into a plug fans. and we, we 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 kind of put them on the deck railing and pointed them in towards kind of the seating area and we call it the breeze machine and pretty effective i mean you know you Super can effective. you kind of dial it right one one two three you can each set them independent, right? Whatever uh, makes a difference, you think? Yeah, definitely helps keep the stagnant air that attracts bugs away. If we're doing cigars, it blows the smoke away. Yeah. Keeps it keeps the air moving. Kind of keeps moving it moving. It, it's been pretty humid, pretty hot here. We uh, Listen, I know we've got a lot of folks around the U.S. Uh, uh, suffering in drought conditions, a lot of fires going on. We see that uh, in our... Um, we see that in our horizon. So when the sun goes down, we've had some pretty spectacular sunsets. And uh, so some, known for its sunsets. it is. We've spent a lot of time on the deck this summer. Oh, a lot of time on the deck last summer. We'll talk a little bit about that here in a second. Of course, uh, the voice you're hearing, Sammy Collison, my daughter, is back Thanks. with us. Sammy, welcome back to Home Gadget Geeks. Thanks for having me again. Yeah, good Good to have you. Uyghur was out. I didn't have a guest, and I was like, hey, can you be here Thursday night? Let's talk about some stuff. And I think everybody likes it when you're on, and uh, and, and yeah. so you're back, and we got some and topics. It's convenient because I live here. It, <laughs> it is super convenient. You're using, and shoot, I should have written down the, the model number of that headset that you have. I've talked about it on the show. Are you hearing yourself back? Are you hearing, you're hearing me right through the headphones on that thing? I can hear you through the headphones. Are you hearing hear you. yourself? Oh, I can't hear myself. Oh, that's, that's, uh, we, we should, should have said something earlier. There's some, Oh, it's fine. There's a, there should be a volume knob on that. I think that's an M audio. Uh, there should be a playback, a volume knob that is both you and me. And I, I, I could have swore I got that set up so you could monitor. Um, yeah, so we'll you're around with it when you're I'm hearing playing. me through your speakers. Is that what you're doing? Oh, God. I'm hearing you through the headphones. Oh, good. Okay. But you're not hearing yourself. I'm not hearing myself. All right. We, th I know that Honestly, works because I've, I've tested those. Yeah. But it, you know, it bothers me when it doesn't work perfectly. Right. And I want it to work perfectly. So, well, uh, we, I wish I would have known that we would have worked that out. We had a whole bunch of time in the pre-show. Um, it's fine. Tonight, uh, Canada asked this in the chat. Uh, how do you like the new fire pit? We're going to, talk about that here in just a second um i've got some updated pictures so kyle was asking me in the facebook group uh, about the fire pit i got some updated pictures of the the uh, the new uh, footing that i put in for the deck um we're going to catch up she doesn't know this but we're going to talk about sammy and i are going to talk about robot vacuum cleaners and uh, we're going to catch up with her and some new projects she's working on and a new store she just opened and some and maybe if we have time a little father daughter cooking stuff some things we've learned about each other uh kind of cooking so that's coming up so make sure you stay all the way to the end just uh those are kind of all the things we'll talk about big thanks to our patreon subscribers and supporters if you haven't i sent you an email this week if you are one of the supporters i sent you an email and said hey you want to help me host home gadget geeks i just kind of thought it'd be fun for being a patreon subscriber i just kind of love to have you on a few of you answered back i could take a few more so if you are a Patreon subscriber and you haven't answered me back or you didn't get the email, whatever it came from Patreon, check that out or let me know, Jim at TheAverageGuy.tv. We can get you scheduled between sometime now and the end of the year. Just love to have you on. You can come on, like bring a question, bring an article, just join us for the conversation. Like no no pressure. Just We want you to come out and just join us, be a part of it. I uh, want to thank you for doing all that you do uh, each and every month here. And uh, we do appreciate it. So if you haven't got that email, consider this an official invitation. And 
if you're behind on your podcast and it's October, it's okay. Just contact me. I'm going to let you on. It doesn't matter. So uh, Jim at TheAverageGuy.tv, we want to thank you um, for doing that as well. Uh, Sammy, Ken got things fired off right of the way. Asked, uh, how do you like the new fire pit? Let's talk a little bit about it. Let me, let's share the screen here. Let me get all that. Fi- First of all, just give us your, as I'm bringing it up, give us your impressions of the new fire pit. What do you think? Well, I haven't been out for burning anything in it yet, but I love the new spot for it. And I'm excited to have more room to put chairs around it. And it just feels like feng shui is an overused word and a misused word, but it feels right in the new spot that it's at in terms of where the deck is and like the flow of the yard. Oh, good. So So I got it right. I got it right. I got it kind of centered off the end of the deck. It's still yet to be glued. I haven't glued it in yet. I was kind of, I kind of, I've tested it once. It kind of worked. We're going to talk about this here in a second because I don't know if I got the solo technology all correct. So we'll talk about that here in a second. Kyle, I think in the Facebook group, it said, hey, can you post a few more pictures of that? And so I went out today. One of the things uh, when we think about, let me, let me go back to um, this uh, and and I brought this up. So we'll go to this. When we think about the the solo fire pit technology, right, that goes into a good burn, right? This is you've seen. I'm sure you've seen these on on Facebook, right? If you if you well, if you're my age and you're my demographic, I am sure they're coming up on your on your Facebook. You know, they're these stainless steel kind of self contained, very sizes, super expensive. I mean, we're talking five hundred to a thousand dollars for these kind of uh, these metal fire pits. Um, and so you can kind of see on, on screen now, the design cold air intake from the bottom. This is a little bit of what I'm missing right now. I'll talk about that here in a second. And then a base plate to hold the wood. I I need to get something for that. Uh, we mentioned, we mentioned last week, you know, I, I do have some, um, so if we, we, well, we'll go back to the picture in a second. It needs cold air being drawn in from the bottom and coming up along the sides and then being superheated and coming out through the top. So you can see it in the picture there. The top has a hold fire ring where that warmer or hot air is reintroduced and it really creates a secondary burn. So you get a burn in the bottom and then as the smoke is leaving, that smoke burns again. And that's really kind of what creates this kind of secondary smokeless. Sammy, I was out there with Jacob and we were burning it. You know, Jacob's my grandson and it was so hot. We just came in. Like, so we got to wait for a cooler day, uh, yeah. uh, to, to go out there and, and get that done. But let me, let me bring that picture back up then. So just, I can share with folks. So what we did is in the bricks below. So it's, a, it's, this is all on a concrete base. I dug this hole out, moved some of the grass away to another hole, put, just took a couple bags of concrete, put them on the ground, then just used a wood, you know, two by four to make this round circle, kind of flat put that metal grate you'll see you know i've got a metal grate in the middle of it you can kind of see it in this picture here i got a three foot diameter grate that goes around it and then this is the picture where you can see you know there's a difference between the top of the metal i I keep calling it a grate but it's a whatever we call that thing metal circle what we call that thing sammy what would you call that ring Ring. i don't know thank you yeah Metal ring does not have a bottom. So, so it is a ring. It's a metal ring. Yeah, it's a three three foot diameter metal ring. Thanks for that. Then you can see that gap between the rock and the metal ring. That's where we reintroduce the air as it as it kind of comes in. So air comes in at the bottom. One of the things you saw in that picture, I don't I don't have anything, I don't have a cold air into the bottom. So I'm gonna Sammy, I'm gonna I'm gonna spend some time this weekend thinking about how do I run some cold air in and get that pulled up from underneath? I got a little bit of, we got a little bit of work to do. um, We need someone who's more proficient in thermodynamics than we are. (laughs) Well, I think we're doing okay um, with it. I think, you know, I've got some leftover tubes, you know, tubing, metal tubing that we ran some electrical through, which I think I could cut into some pieces and then drill some holes and then put that in. And yeah, I think, I think there's some possibility. I just hope those, the cracks that I put at the bottom, I hope I left enough, you know, those are enough air kind of coming in. It's, it should go around the backside. And I didn't take a picture of that. You go in the backside dirt. There's dirt back there. So I can't, 
really grab air from back there. So I've got to, uh, I got to get that figured out. I guess I could get fancy and put a big tube under the ground and come up somewhere. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't do that. But, um, Oh, so we got some work to do. We need to, I think we, we kind of need to plan a burn, right? I mean, yes. we, it's, we, we haven't quite done that yet. The other, the other big pro, uh, project and Sammy um, gives me a hard time about this all the time. Cause I'm always, well, you say it, what am I always doing out there? You're always working on the deck. <laughs> always making improvements to some of the always, things that were going on. Changing, just tweaking. Yeah, upgrading. I, I do things wrong. Didn't didn't get it done right. I'd asked you two weeks ago. I think it was. I'd had this footing that look didn't look just right, and um, uh, and you know maybe I maybe I should bring up. Let me see if I can get to the old picture. Well, um, of the footing before. This is I'm kind of well. Okay, you got to tell on me for a second. So the other night we were eating dinner. Go ahead and tell that story while I find this picture. We were talking about airdrop. We were talking about what? Airdrop. Oh, Remember? my dad. He does not. He did not know until the other night that airdrop was in fact a feature <laughs> on Apple products because I airdropped him a picture and he was like, "What? What's that? He had never done that before. No. He, how long have you had an iPhone?" Oh, uh, I don't know, four four years maybe. Yeah, no. Never used AirDrop. That it is a it is a time time old tradition among media students that especially in like bigger classes on the first day we all AirDrop each other memes to anybody who has their AirDrop on. So like everybody who has iPhones is in on the joke, and everybody who has Androids is shamed. Well, I didn't know. So she she but taught now me. You know. Now you know. So the things you know. So this is the corner of the deck that I asked for help on. And uh, that footing had sunk four inches uh, into the ground. I'm pretty sure I didn't pack it down enough. I uh, didn't, didn't support it enough with that footing. It's a pretty small footing, a little eight-inch footing that's down there. And so, you know, the, the deck sloped four inches and eight feet. It's quite a bit. And um, you could kind of feel it when you were walking it. Kevin Schoonover and a few of you sent me some advice on some things. I was looking for kind of ways to reconnect that. I actually went down a rabbit hole, Sammy, and watched, I don't know, 50 YouTube videos on different ways to repair the deck and uh, watched it how we could, I could drill. The problem is most of them want to drill in, you know, they put a, they want to put a hole in there and then put a hardware device that you pound in and that hardware device kind of spreads out once it gets in the hole. That locks the pin in place and then you can put the the fitting and the screw and connect do a hardware connection to that footing. So that way, if you get wind, it doesn't pick up. We do get a little bit of wind here in Nebraska from time to time. We haven't had, well, no, we, we, we have had some problems with it. We've had some trees go down in our neighborhood. So I want to, as you see in this, in this footing here and this look right here, if you just kind of look at the bottom, it's not attached to the concrete. That's the way it came by the way. Mm -hmm. So the, the folks who had put it in there, Oh, I'm sure I'll show that picture again. The, the way that footing is just sitting on top of it, not necessarily attached to it. Okay, so that's what it looked like before. We kind of got the before picture. Let's. I need to scroll through a few pictures of Charlie and Emery and some of my grandkids. And uh, we'll get back through the fire pit, get those done. And then I'll show that again. And so now this is the new footing. So basically what I did is take a 12-inch, so it had been eight. I went it to a 12 inch, um, a tube that I bought at Menards, cut that down, dug it down some, put the tube in, put rebar into the ground, rebar around the center of it, uh, sunk the bolt down into the, you know, poured it full of concrete, put the bolt down into the concrete. So it's set in there. Um, I kind of finished it off that way, bought a, all the things that you need to attach the post to the concrete. And now I have to wait at least two weeks. I should wait four. concrete sets up in 28 days. And so um, I should wait the full 28 days to get that done. The deck is being, never fear. The deck is being supported by some wood frames and, and is fine up there. It's not going to fall over. So we'll have to see how that goes, but it looks nicer and uh, it should do its job. I may have to epoxy that bolt in. I didn't do the best job on getting it. I also didn't get it far, far enough down. So I may have to do some retro work on it. Anyways, Sammy, my goal was do one because I have two more to do. Let's do mm -hmm. one and see how it goes. 
learn some things. The other two should be easier, right? Yeah. I believe in you. Yeah. <laughs> well, it certainly you. looks a lot sturdier. It really does, it makes doesn't me it? Feel a little better. Doesn't that look doesn't that look good on there? And it's not connected yet. And I've, you know, I, I only need to get the jack out. I got a 12 ton bottle jack and put it out there. But it's it was um I do have a little bit of a challenge in there getting that footing, you know, that metal footing up on the post. So I got to still kind of figure that out and a few other things, but uh, I, I think we can get it done. It's good fun. It's one of those kind of things. I'm surprisingly, um, I don't know. I kind of like it. It's like adult Legos, you know, it is kind of like adult Legos, yeah. but a little more free form. Yeah. Well, and I, you know, I love my deck, so True. it's it always, it's always a great, yeah, it's always a great opportunity to, to, to be out, you know, to be out doing that, to spend time together on the deck. I think, you know, we've talked about this ad nauseum, so we won't spend too much more time, but it has been during COVID. It has been a great place to go, right? Just to, to, you know, spend some time uh, together. And, and I just really enjoyed it. So it's been fun to be out there. Big fan. Um, Okay. I'm going to spring a surprise on you all week for the last two weeks in my face, excuse me, in my Facebook feed. I have been getting these, uh, and I need to reshare this. So let me stop sharing the screen. We're going to do a lot of screen sharing. This may be one if you're watching the audio. Hopefully you can, I shared the wrong one. Let's pull that back. Uh, You might want to jump over to the video and see this. But I don't know. Maybe I'm in the right demographic. But (laughs) iRobot has been, has a new offering for their, for the robot vacuum cleaners, right? Now, Sammy, you know, I'm the vacuum cleaner in the house, right? It's my Dad job. Dad has two major chores and he's trying to <laughs> automate one of them. Well, you know, I got some, I've, I've got a few more chores than two, um, maybe two and a half. Besides vacuuming. Well, let's let's into not get into, let's not get into details. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I do a lot of dishes. I cook a lot. Come on, That's cut true. me some slack, right? But some, if I we take care of all the outside chores, work. I maintain all the cars. Let's let's automate some chores. Okay. So as we're thinking about this, I oh, iRobot has a brand new program, which is uh, $29 a month. I think it's 30 bucks to set this thing up. $29 a month for three years. Okay. So you're kind of thinking that's 300 and some change, maybe 700 over two years, three years. That's going to be about a grand. The product itself retails for about 800. So you're probably paying 200 more. They will throw in all the bags and stuff that you need over the course of the three years. You don't, you don't need to do anything else to that vacuum cleaner except run it. You're going to pay $30 a month for three years, right? But it's like, it's like you're now, mm, I don't want to say leasing. That's a bad term. But I guess you're, it's a subscription service for robot vacuum cleaners. I mean, Sammy, this is made for me. What do you think? What do you think? 30 bucks a month. Now in our, you know, we have an up and a downstairs. This just would do one floor at a time. So it's not like I, yeah. Uh, Until you know, they learn to climb stairs. There is. Yeah. Limit. Yeah. And I, maybe I could take it downstairs, I guess, or something. I don't know. I have to figure that part out, but when is MIT going to make that robot dog be able to vacuum floors? Oh, or at least to have that robot dog carry the robot vacuum cleaner down to the downstairs when it's time. Right. Um, uh, Tony uh, says uh, he's got one that was about 180 the ways version. Good enough for him. That's worked. Now, for, you know, it's, Tony at $200 each, I could get one for the upstairs in the downstairs. Now, let me be really clear on this on this iRobot vacuum cleaner. It's the top of the line version. It's got its own base station. It, that, it comes up to it and it empties itself into the base station like, they're saying you, I could go months without having to vacuum myself. That that must be better for people with allergies or with a lot of pet hair because then you don't have to, you don't have the cloud of dander in your face when you change the. Right. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think? Does our house get dirty enough that it needs to be run every couple of days by a robot vacuum cleaner? And would you feel weird with that thing moving its way around the house? I wouldn't feel weird about it moving around the house, but I don't know if our house gets that dirty anymore. I mean, there, there's, there's two of us and a cat who's really old. 
here on a daily basis. And I'm a messy Marvin, but you are not. So, like, li- basically, there's just one person here making a mess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's just, like, my hair and some cat hair. Yeah, Joe, Joe says in the chat room, he said, last experience I had was a neato. Uh, it was dumb as a brick. It was dead set on driving immediately under the couch and getting stuck. Um, yeah, I'm curious to see how this one's navigation software is. Yeah, Erin Lawrence, who's coming on in a couple of weeks, she's reviewed all these things. And I think probably iRobot is the premier one in this kind of in this space. Um, I think if I did something like this, I would probably pair it to to Tony's point. I might pair it with the like a, a cheap one down in the basement. One of the things, you know, the, the litter box is down here. So from time to time, there's some litter. You know, Pippin's pretty neat. He's our cat. He's pretty neat, but he does, it does, the litter does make its way. You yeah, know, he's got long hair. It clings. Clings a little bit. Um, you know, and, and so it would be kind of nice to have one at night kind of cleaning the basement. I may have to, I, I may reconfigure some things. Is that, am, am I being super lazy with this thing, Sammy? Is this, is this just too, so you're saying we don't have enough dirt to justify Thirty dollars a month on this thing. I mean, in terms of cost per use, I don't know if our household is the ideal mm. situation. Yeah. As a housekeeper, somebody who's done a lot of housekeeping, sounds amazing. Most of my housekeeping life has spent dusting and vacuuming large amounts of carpet. So, like, I've seen some houses that could benefit from this, but I don't know if ours is one of them. Mm. It's smaller. And so there's not there's not as much space for it to vacuum in. We do have a lot of things on the floor because of that. So that's it, true. My it would, floor is always covered in stuff. Your floor is the kitchen. The dining room is pretty tight. It's got a lot of chairs in it, and so it would never be able to get underneath the table. You know, I'm talking myself out of this. Yep. You know. <laughs> The the it would the, be nice. The curve, you were really selling it, and now you're talking yourself out of <laughs> well, it. Well, that's what we do here on on Home Gadget Geeks. It's it's you know kind of think through. Uh, don't don't get me wrong. I mean, I kind of thought through the financials on this thing. We don't need a vacuum cleaner. Like I don't. It's not like I need one at the moment. Uh, we have a couple really good ones, and uh, yeah. and it's really I like the idea of it so much. <laughs> yeah. Well. Okay. But to be honest, it's it's. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I haven't run this. Uh, uh, Tony says we should ask, you know, Sarah, <laughs> what she thinks about this. I haven't even run it by her. I, I really wasn't even going to talk about it. But then when I had you on here, I was like, oh, we got to, I got to, that's a, the perfect gadget for this, you know, for yeah. this. I, I kind of am, I, I kind of am thinking about, and now that Tony brought that up, maybe that, maybe just a ways, maybe a fairly simple robot vacuum cleaner for the basement to keep the, because there's a lot of there's some concrete floors down here. There's my floor down here. It's a little or bit we more. We could alternate the basement and just the living room because the living room gets a lot of traffic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Brian says uh, so many things are moving to the subscription model. You know, you you are a child of the subscription model. When we think about all the tech things, I mean, you're living in this world. When you when you think of either buying things outright, we're going to talk about we need a camera recommendation for you. And so when we think about some of those things where, you know, Adobe, as a journalist, you work in Adobe, you know, in in some of the cloud creative stuff. Um, Maybe not right now, but I think you have in the past, right? Um, uh, How do you, how do you personally feel about subscription versus just buying it outright? I high key kind of hate the subscription model Mm -hmm. because especially when it comes to things like Adobe, it's so transparent that it's like money grab because 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 producers figured out that if you make something really well one time people will buy it one time and then never need to buy it again i i miss when you could buy it like i in in the when i was a kid you could buy a cell phone and you could drop it 10,000 times and it would still work like Phil had an old Nokia brick that he dropped a million times and it was like duct taped together and it still worked. You just put the battery back in and it worked. But it wasn't I very smart. This phone. True. But yeah. I've 
why do they is why is it necessary to make the back of this phone glass like what because <laughs> it looks what is, elegant what is that no it's because it's easier to break so you need to replace it anyway um, i'm a little cynical when it comes to the subscription model <laughs> well we we ought to talk about you know your next phone a little bit maybe we'll talk about yeah. that here towards the end of the show because you have it here y- your well, you have an hand me down phone that you're I gonna do have a hand me down at some point I'm move to right? the iPhone and, to use and this guy. And what is that guy? Tell us what you got there. This is a Google Pixel 2 that my brother gave me because I am tired of iPhone BS. Now, the Google Pixel is on four, five, and six, I think, at this point. Do you yeah. are you going backwards to go to a two? Is that going to work for you? I, I think it might have came out the same year as my current phone because I have the mm-hmm. iPhone 8. So I think I'm just jumping from one to the other. But really, for me, a phone is battery life. And so, like, I will go to a less used phone that where my battery will last longer. And I'm okay with that. And you think that one's been sitting in the box for a while? Do you think that one's going to be okay when you go to take it out? And I've turned it on a couple it? times and it seems yeah. all right. All right. And you're gonna go? Are you gonna go Google Fi? What then? When you when you go I that way? I think so because I truly don't actually use data that much. So I wonder if I'm overpaying by having unlimited data. Well, I'm not paying. You might be overpaying because I. Thanks for the in, reminder. In my current life, <laughs> since I went to college, my I have switched over to using Wi-Fi almost all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, as part of your college gig, we kind of picked up those expenses and and uh, and have those for you. We're, we're as you start working and doing some other things, we'll be transitioning those over. Ken says he has a Pixel Three now, solid phone, and so that could be a good. Um, that could that could be good. Oh, good! I have some in in Twitch. We have a we have a uh, we've got a spammer in Twitch. So spam. pretty cool. I'll have to <laughs> I'll have to head over there and and see what's going on. Um, so yeah, so we've got, um, I, I guess, I guess I'm, I probably am not buying the robot vacuum cleaner. Not at this point. Probably doesn't make sense. Tony, you're, you gave a pretty good review or you, at least in chat, you said you got the wise ones. I'll have to take a look at those. Um, I've kind of wanted one for the basement. I honestly thought I'd try and find one in, on the marketplace for the garage for the winter. When we, you know, when it gets all dusty in there from oh, the sand. It's so sandy. Yeah. Just to have one to kind of constantly be picking up the sand. I, that may be too much sand, just to be honest, for one of those little vacuum cleaners. Maybe we yeah. just need to keep the leaf blower by the door. It's out there. It's out there. Yeah, it's 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 not as fun as knowing you got a robot out there. That's true. Cleaning some things. But up. also I have seen both Black Mirror and also Love Death and Robots. <laughs> Well, I don't think a robot vacuum cleaner is going to kill us in our sleep. There's an episode. I need to show you the episode of Love, Death, and Robots. <laughs> Please tell me somebody in the chat has seen it. it there's it a is. whole there's a whole episode of a of a, a robot housekeeper that turns on its owner. Mm. Tony says his wife uh, has a Pixel Three XL. Battery's kind of poor. Just ordered a new mm-hmm. Pixel Five A. Tony, what'd you pay for that? That Five A? Those are pretty. Those are pretty inexpensive. Um, Sammy, you're working on a new project. Let's first of all, let's I catch am. up with uh, with ca- let's catch up with you. I think it's been a year since we've had you on. Tell us just a little bit about where you're at and what you're doing at this point. Yes, so I'm still doing journalism degree at this point. It's kind of up in the air of how I'm finishing my degree because um, I've only got a couple classes left. So I'm not going back to campus. I'm trying to finish online, but whether I'm just going to do Northwest remote or transfer, still up in the air. But in the meantime, I'm off this semester because I did my summer class and then I've got a spring class. And so I've, while I've been job hunting, I have, I've been playing D&D for a year and a half now, I think. I think it started at the beginning of the pandemic. And um, I very quickly became a dice hoarder. I made everybody dice bags at the beginning when we all started playing because me and Josh, my brother, started playing together and then accumulated group of friends but i outgrew my dice bag this year and so i made myself a new one and and hold on before you show it before you show it like when we no it's okay when you think of 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 a regular dice bag it's kind of you know it's small it's holding six to eight dice right in there and my old one yeah well each set is seven dice yeah seven okay so you need at least seven to play okay and, but and so you're showing, you know, kind of, kind of the size of your hand, like, yeah. Right. Yeah. 
now show the deluxe version of what you're making. And did you, is this your design? Did you get it off the internet? How'd you do this? This is my design, my pattern. It's based on other dice bags that people sell, like in this kind of shape and configuration. But in terms of crochet specific dice bags, this is my creation. I invented this pattern. And you're hand so this making my, these, right? I am hand making these mm -hmm. with a hook. Where's my hook? With a hook this big. Wow. Um, so this is mine, uh, but I'm making versions of this and I'll open it up so you can see the inside because it's not just because one of the things was I was tired of dumping out my entire dice bag in order to find the dice that I wanted. So let's see if I can show this without dumping it out. It's got dividers in it. So there's different pockets. So I have, I have two to three dice sets in each pocket. I have one that's just like all D20s, um, which is the main die that you use. Um, so I can sort out my dice and I can just pull out a handful, the one or two sets that I need to play that game. So I've been making them to sell them because I posted a picture on a Facebook group focused on D&D. &D and a bunch of people were like, I would buy that. Or people who didn't who weren't like super advanced in crochet were like, I would love to see one of those. So I've made a bunch. Sorry, my lighting isn't amazing, but I have a blue one. How do I make this better? That's better. There you go. I have a blue one. Yeah, that's good. Custom made. This, by one's, way. this one's my favorite. This one looks most like mine. So all of them are completely different from each other. And you can kind of see the dividers better. Bloop. There's six. Yeah. And and pockets. so you make it for dice, but any kind of any kind of I mean it could you need to sort things. This one's for Josh. Yeah. yeah. That's my that's that's Sammy's things. brother, Josh. Yes, my brother. Yes. He, he gets the that's kind of a maroon red. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So if you need to sort small things. Yeah, no, pretty cool. And I think in the D and D world, uh very appropriate because of in and it seems I don't know why, but you guys all got into dice. Like I didn't yeah. ever well, see that just, coming. They're just fun and sparkly. And I got this custom one that has books inside of it, like little tiny books based on my character. This is like huge for no reason. But it, they're just fun. They're, it's just a fun collectible and they make the most delightful quacking noise. Mm -hmm. And I just don't I don't know why the addiction is there, but it just <laughs> instantly was there. It's just a fun thing to collect, especially if you're just a collecting type person. Yeah, I just I didn't even know it was a thing. Where where do you get your dice from? Where where if you're if you're buying them, where do you buy I them, get them from? From a lot of different places. Um, Die Hard Dice does the best metal dice, and they also have the best uh like customer service people. Like every single order I get comes with like a handwritten note in like beautiful handwriting. Um. Yeah. Okay. So like, that's the note. That's a thank you note. Hold on. Hold that back a, up. This is a handwritten thank you note from the people at Die Hard Dice. After they, they sent you. Yeah. Wow. And they, they give you freebies all the time. So Die Hard Dice is amazing. Um, Die D &D Hard Dice? Dice? Is that Die, Die Hard? Dice. Okay. Um, especially they do the best metal dice. DnDDice.com um, does a lot of acrylic dice. They do the best like mass manufactured acrylic dice with like inclusions or really sparkly ones. They just have the best selection of non-metal dice. And then I also still, I like to buy custom ones from people on Etsy who do resin, hand-poured resin dice, which is what my giant D20 is. Yeah, so a couple, made. I mean, dice just aren't your regular white and black and white dice no. anymore, right? There's all and these kinds of different there's varieties. There's six different shapes in each set. And so it's it's one of those things where the custom the custom yeah. aspect of it is so yeah. fun. It's it's kind of a gadget in some ways. I mean, this is kind of why it. I wanted to talk about it tonight because they have different kinds, do different things, different looks. The the dice that you showed that has the books in it. Yeah. Is that a so is that a resin that they've it that is they've resin. Used? So the books themselves are physical little tiny books that the the dice maker Carly um shout out cutthroat dice. Uh, found at Michael's and she painted them and then there's like gold foil and then the rest of it is resin that she made you can you can either buy masters or make masters and then make your own molds I've been watching some woodworkers on YouTube because that's what I do I just I just watch YouTube that's all I do is watch people make things on YouTube 
And the big thing to do now is to take two opposing slabs of wood or a piece of wood that has a void in it. And then you put it on this custom table, right? And then you fill, they fill the table with resin, basically. It's so like. satisfying. It, you like that? Yeah. You like watching those things? Resin what, pouring is kind of satisfying. What is it? What is it about that that's so satisfying? I don't know. It just feels, it's just, and it's just so smooth when you get all the air bubbles out. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. It well, it. it's, I think, you know, sometimes they try to make it look like a waterfall, right? Where it's dropping off yeah, the side. Or a river. I've seen, I've seen some of those. Um, interesting to see that resin uh, now being used. I shouldn't say now, but being used in dice and with the, cre you know, kind of the creativity they're seeing there. What is it? You know, I played D&D &D back in the 80s, uh, you know, Way back in first edition. Uh, OG, Woo! OG D&D. Uh, &D. What is it about uh, hanging out like, you know, because D&D can be both physical or it can be, you know, you can play online, I'm assuming. Right. What is it about it that that's that you're enjoying right now as far as being a part of a D&D group? I like that it's a structured way to hang out with your friends mm. on a regular basis, first and foremost, that like you really bond with these people because that's the fastest way to make a friend is to do the same thing regularly. That's why we're friends with people at work. That's why you're such close friends with people when you're in school. And so it kind of gives that structured aspect of friendship once you've left school and you like really have a hankering for that um it's cooperative and so you you really build trust between people that way and also it's there's an escapism act, aspect of it because you're playing someone who's not you and so you could just just be someone else for a couple hours however long you're playing um and yeah and it's creative it's just collaborative storytelling and storytelling is like my thing so yeah, yeah. this is just another way of storytelling I'm doing but some creative storytelling. Do you find, is there any tech uh, involved in it as, as far as what you guys do? Is there a tech side to this or is. There is you know, a lot more tech to it these days than there was in the eighties because you can play. There is the, like we said, virtually um, one, there's a, there's a site called D and D beyond where you can build your whole character and run your character sheet digitally, entirely digitally. And it is in conjunction with, Wizards of the Coast, the people who make D&D. &D. Um, and so you can buy books through them and have all of your D&D &D stuff instead of being on pencil and paper online. And then all of the programs used to host D&D &D digitally, like there's there's virtual maps that you can use and everybody can get on one thing um, and like move your characters around and it hosts voice chat through it. And there's there's so many different, there's like three or four main uh, like websites that do that sort of thing where they host, mm. where they're designed specifically for hosting virtual D and D. Mm. So everybody can share it together. Yeah. It's a different game. I, I don't, I don't have, you know, we, uh, at one point we thought maybe you'd get, you were going to try to rope mom and I into playing and, and we, we I, I think we somehow, still. I think we somehow got out of it, but um, it, it, you know, it doesn't have, I, it's just different for me, but I know the technology, you know, I know the, the, it, I mean, it has really made a, made a comeback in a lot of ways. And I have to admit, I kind of almost have more fun watching you guys geek out about it than I do doing it myself. Like I, you know, we saw my, we saw the things I like to build when, when we think about the, you know, when we think about the, the, the fire pit and working on the yeah. deck and, the deck came with some, you know, whole new flower box and some new plants. And we did some other things with it, including I've been mixing up my, uh, my, um, cigar, um, butts, uh, mixing them up in the flower beds. So you have both flowers and it smells like tobacco. It's pretty great. So, and ash uh, returns to the earth. And yeah. Yeah. We put the ashes in there as well. That's kind of been where we've been, where we've been putting things. Um, uh, but it's There's been a lot more fun. There's also the phenomena of custom-built D&D tables. Yeah, and so, so tell me a little bit about that. What does that mean? A lot of people will build them. They'll put TVs in the middle, like flat, laying flat in the middle of the table, and that's your map. So mm. instead of doing a map on graph paper or building it out of... I'm, I'm name-dropping so many brands, but Dwarven Forge is a major one that builds, like, terrain pieces or, like, people who played... Um, 
remember. I remember the game. What's the game that John played all the time when he was a kid? Uh, something Warhammer. Yes, Warhammer, Was like Warhammer? all that, like custom terrain. Instead of doing that, they'll put a TV in the middle or put a projector above the table, and the the map is digital, and then you move either digital or physical minis on top of the. Yeah, that would be. And there'll be like be... pockets underneath, or like spot, like dice trays built into the table. Like there's this whole corner of the internet, especially on TikTok, of people custom building these tables for their D and D rooms in their houses. Yeah wild yeah. yeah well i think anything that can be done can be overdone right true because we play at josh's poker table in the garage but he's been wanting a custom table for a good while yeah tony just remind me tony thanks for this i'm looking on twitter we had so many sammy you and i had so much time before the show we were just staring at each other mm -hmm. and i totally forgot to go on youtube and change the live page Whoops. over <laughs> over yeah you know, I, I sometimes, you know, I've only done that like 8,000 times, you know, where it's like, you know, you got to do that every show, you know, you got to go out there and, uh, you know, I got to, I got to copy and paste. Otherwise I don't know. Thank goodness. Uh, most of our folks know how to get, you know, if they, if they go to the live page and they're like, Oh, okay. That's 500 from last week. He's probably on. And I think I, I think I put a link on the live page to the YouTube instance that has, if I forget it or not. So anyways, Tony, I saw your note on, uh, on Twitter and, uh, of course I'm a dork. I mean, I've only been doing this 501 time and, uh, forgot to, uh, to go out there and get that changed that, uh, I think that's updated now. Not that it matters now for the folks. I do an automatic tweet on uh, Friday mornings that say, Hey, um, you know, if you uh, if missed it, it's available. So that'll be good. Let's just I'll just double check and make sure that's working for them. But uh, but Tony, thanks for that. You can always send me your recommendations. I had to go. Tony said I had a video page on YouTube to find it. Live page link website didn't work. No, it worked. It just went to the um, it just went to 500 and not 501. So thanks for finding us over here. OK, we. um. We, we need to talk a little bit about, I want to get some advice. I haven't had a, a lot of great luck from the community on getting advice. I've gotten some, so I appreciate that. Uh, Sammy, we need to get a, a, a DLSR for you. I kind of wish Mike Howard was still here. I miss, I miss Mike. Um, but, but cause he was our kind of our camera expert, but I'm sure we got a few cameras that are out there as well. I'm kind of leaning, um, you know, I'm kind of leaning. We need to get you a fairly, well, first of all, tell us what you need a camera for. If, I bought you a pretty nice camera. What kind of things would you use it for? I need a camera, one, for a photojournalism class, because that's one of my degree, degree requirements. Um, but I also want to be able to start filming myself and doing knitting and crochet tutorials or other start, sorts of video content online. You know, that's my thing, multimedia mm -hmm, mm -hmm. media stuff. So having a camera that can both take decent photos um, and has manual settings that I can fidget with, but also takes decent video because you can take video on your phone, but as it turns out, getting videos off of, especially iPhones, is truly a feat. <laughs> and so it'd be nice to have something where you just pop an SD card out and stick it in yeah. your computer. Because yeah. I miss that about college, yeah. using all of their cameras. <laughs> Well, and, and to Andrew's point, you know, I, I think I misspoke. I know nothing about cameras, by the way. So D, SLR, or mirrorless. In this case, I think we're looking for, and I think they're SLRs, mirrorless SLRs. I think, and again, yeah. I, this, is, this, this is the terminology. Forgive me for getting that wrong. Um, I think uh, the, the one I'm showing on the screen right now, the Sony Alpha A6000, Seems to be, uh, um, seems to be the ones that, at least in the podcast circles, the one that I'm uh, kind of leaning towards, the one I've heard the most about, the one that seems to be, and, and you know, this one, I don't know if I'm going to go with this one, but it was just the first one I found on, on, on kind of on Amazon. Um, love to hear, and, and we're not buying this, you know, tomorrow. So we've got a little bit of time. Love to hear your recommendations. You can throw them in the chat here while we're talking. Send me an email, jim at theaverageguy.tv. But 
you know, Sammy, as we, um, as I go out there and look at those, there's all kinds of kits and you can get lenses. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a whole new world. Uh, we, when Mike, when Mike Howard was here, we talked a lot about this, but it's a whole different world. What'd you use at school? Do you remember? I don't remember. I'm bad at remembering those model numbers and stuff, but it's like, I'm not doing so many of my colleagues back at college were, um, especially sports photographers. So they really needed all the bells and whistles. Cause you're, you're having to deal with shoddy lighting in gyms and you're trying to deal with taking photos of things that are going very fast. Um, and so, th- or you need long range lenses. So they really had all the bells and whistles, but I'm like, I'm, mostly going to be taking pictures and videos of people who are standing still or moving slowly and or just like just video like this just talking heads or moving Mm -hmm. hands Mm -hmm. so like i'm like i don't need everything under the sun i don't need all of the options i just need this many options (laughs) just a few options yeah and i think just just a toolkit that's this big i need a toolkit that's this big not this big (laughs) <laughs> for the people um, who are listening that was me comparing my dice bags well and and um yeah yeah and i listen i know absolutely nothing about cameras i mean i really don't they passed me the last camera i really owned that wasn't a cell phone was a canon t50 and um uh tony in the chat says he bought a canon m50 mark ii and returned it felt a little small and when he connected to your phone for photo transfer the app battery just died um, and so good, good there. He says, however, it gets great reviews from YouTube creators. I, I think that is that Canon M50, the T50 was from the eighties. So like mm-hmm. this was a camera that was probably new in 85, 86, something like that. So it was a long time ago. Listen, it took great pictures. It was a great camera. I might still have it around here somewhere. Now it's film. So of course we wouldn't use it. No, it's film. Yeah. Yeah, it's film. That's it's film for the camera. hipsters. Yeah, yeah. Hipsters it's it's film. it's old school. I think. Yeah, I don't. Maybe I gave it to somebody. I can't remember. If we still um, have it, it needs to go in my graveyard of old technology. That's we true. Still haven't gone through. That's true. So that should be a show. To remember to do that. Yeah, I've been meaning to do that for a while. That I have a box a show. full of defunct technology in my closet. Yeah. Just for funsies. Yeah, maybe we can get some other folks to join us for that and uh, and walk through the graveyard. Joe says an A6, uh, A6000 was the one he was looking at before last vacation, but never pulled the trigger. Joe, why didn't, why didn't you pull the trigger on it? What, what stopped you from doing that? Just the price. It seems, uh, as I was looking on a, at Amazon on those, they, they range from, oh, let's say 700 to 1,000 different packages. Sammy, I think, you know, this may be one. I don't know. Maybe we want to go to a local camera store if they say. If those things Aren't still there, exist. Is there a such thing? Maybe just like Best Buy. I think I think there is though. Like I think if we go out to Rockbrook, I think there's a camera store out there. I I don't know of many of them. Um, oh, Bring you know. Stores that are still open. Props. And, Andrew's got a great suggestion. I've got a, um, uh, no, I'm thinking of Sweetwater. I was going to say, I got a rep at Sweetwater that I could probably ping and say, hey, I'm thinking about this. I don't know if Sweetwater sells cameras. Um, I, I could, I, I could ask B and H, um, as well. Um, it, he, uh, Tony, uh, Tony says watching the alpha, the Sony alpha channel on YouTube, just stunning. And, uh, and, uh, Andrew says B and H better than Best Buy. So we don't, we don't have one. Oh, maybe we have to take a trip to the New York store, the New York, uh, B and H. Listen, store, I will right? take any excuse to <laughs> go to New York. <laughs> Oh yeah. Tony says his return to B and H was flawless. Um, so yeah, yeah, I guess we got a little, we, we got a little work to do and maybe this is, um, maybe I need to give you a little homework, which is to watch some review videos on YouTube. Um, uh, maybe you need to Google best cameras for photojournalism and then you'll get some, I'm, I'm sure you'll get a whole bunch of different kinds of cameras. And then, you know, maybe watch some, watch some reviews, see what you see. We can, um, uh, we can talk about it and, and kind of have some conversations that would give us some time for your contribution. So if you got, if you feel strong about this, I know there's a little, uh, you know, like Java versus .NET, there's a little war that goes on, uh, in between for camera owners between, I think Canon and Sony, I think that's yeah. or the Canon and Nikon. Maybe it was those. Maybe it was those two. I have no loyalty to any of the above. 
Although I think it's cool we use Canon. Canon. Although I think our video gamers might have been Sony. I don't remember. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I would. You know, originally I thought I'd buy it for you and then uh, use it for a camera for podcasting. And now Elgato has one that's a little bit cheaper than that. That's a little step up from the the um, the Logitech C920 that I have. So I may go that route. I may go that route instead. So, um, yeah, love to hear from you. If you've got some ideas, some kits, like you need to buy it with this. It's cheaper if you buy it this way. Some um, true B&H loyalty in the chat today on this day. Yeah, well, I mean, I think they're they're pretty great, right? And and you don't have to go to New York. Yeah, we know that. You, they, they, they can ship them over. Um, I did Andrew, see a comment from Rainer earlier about uh, YouTubers preferring smaller cameras. And I think that that is like a lot of um, DSLRs and SLRs have gotten a lot smaller because of vlogging, because people are holding their cameras up like this and they don't, it, with the vlog arm, and they don't, I mean, unless you really want ripped triceps, like, <laughs> but this is exhausting. So uh, they're good at it though. Smaller and lighter. Yeah. They're good. For that I'm, purpose. I'm seeing a lot of vloggers or a lot of YouTubers putting it on a tripod and then they hold the tripod. They hold the tripod like a yeah. mini. Like a yeah. little grill so pod. you're not holding the camera. You're yeah. holding. I think that 6,000, we should check. I think we want to make sure that that the the video, you know, the you have the vi the viewfinder that pops out, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that thing you want to be able to spin that yeah, thing back. I want to be able to see myself because right. I'll be filming myself. Right. Um, I'll mostly be filming my hands, but if I want to film my face, I want to be able to see myself. Yeah. Not yeah. Because we can't... of vanity, just for framing purposes. No, we got to get some. You know, we ought to think about getting the getting something set up so you can film the process of knitting one of these you know one of these dice bags i bet yeah. that would i mean be... it might be counterintuitive to most people to give a tutorial on how to make the thing you're selling but i think that there's a lot of people who will buy it regardless because they just don't want to learn to crochet just yeah. to do just but they want to watch you bag. do it they want to yeah. watch you make it yeah <laughs> but there are yeah. a lot of there were some people in the comments of that post i put in that facebook group who were crocheters who were asking me for details of like how I did it because I made up my own pattern. And so I think a tutorial would be nice for those yeah. people. So they could it's a share it economy, right? And from a YouTube standpoint, the more people that like it, they share it, they get, you get views, you get yeah. Everybody revenue. gets cool bags to hold dice or whatever you want to hold. Yeah. We got to, we got to set up your YouTube channel is what we got to do. Working on it. Get that. I mean, thing. I technically have two videos on my YouTube channel. They're just well, not of me. There you go. We get. We got to get. Uh, we got to get that thing. We got to put a plan together and get it growing. So, if you want to send me some camera recommendations, I think we got a couple weeks, don't we? So send us. Uh, send us your email. Send us your recommendations. Sooner the better. Jim at theaverageguy.tv. We'd love to kind of. We'd love to kind of see today. I have to admit, I went old school. I wrote our show notes <laughs> on paper. Isn't that funny? Show notes. That's uh, like when an artist has a physical set list and you can steal it after the show. Yeah. No, right on. The drummer usually has a list yeah. that looks something like this. Or the this is... or it's taped. Switchfoot, it's always taped on the floor. Yeah. You know what this is? This is um, uh, when Tim, my Marine son, went to the dentist and they sent us the, the it's not a bill. It's a uh, it's just a statement of of benefits. And I've turned it into a uh, show note. We are reduce, reuse, recycle in this house 100%. Pretty we... much all junk mail gets reused as some sort of list. Yeah. No, it's pretty good. And then it goes yeah. in the recycling. So it does. I do. I have, learned. listen, I have the original. I kept it the first week, maybe second the week of the oh, pandemic. The first week of the pandemic when we started writing menus on envelopes. <laughs> we did. We started making menus together and we're we like, okay. Like, kept the our label we should have made a pandemic scrapbook why didn't we think of that i didn't That's think we okay. th we didn't think it was going to last this long let's be real no we really didn't we had more faith in humanity but we, last we well it's okay it's it's uh we're getting there the um yeah no i think there's a lot of you know, here's the deal we walter made it for sure right we for sure yeah we have a lot we Even we really moment. enjoyed we enjoyed those times together so it was good if you it was good secret life of walter Mitty. 12 out of 10 would recommend. Yeah. Great, great, great movie film. indeed. Um, Sammy, uh, I want to close with, uh, with some, some things we learned about ourselves from HelloFresh. 
you know, I've, I talked about this, by the way, if you want, I, I got a whole bunch of new coupons and I always have coupons. If it's, if you're new to the program, you haven't tried HelloFresh, like no, uh, HelloFresh may be responsible for most of the great times that Sammy and I have had together over the last two years, maybe three that we've been doing it. Um, send me an email, track me down. I'll, I'll give you, I'll get you a code. We'll get you some free HelloFresh to give it, give it a try. It has been, uh, it has been super cool. But as you think about things you've gotten better at what through just cooking together and it doesn't i mean we've done a lot of different things a lot of it's been hello fresh but what kind of lessons after the last you know we've been doing this for a year and a half now as far as cooking together we've cooked a lot together anything anything you take away from that you kind of you take away from that time that you do differently now than you might have done before or some tips or tricks that you've learned yeah, my cooking skills were pretty bare bones before HelloFresh. And so I have picked up a lot of things. I had never, like, I never confidently cooked meat ever because I was just terrified of poisoning my whole family. I think I've <laughs> talked about this in an episode before. But one, now I know all the temperatures to cook meat to, just like off the top of my head. Poultry is 165. Um, that's the most important one. Well, and how, how great is it? We bought that new, you know, you got instant... An instant read thermometer, which is amazing. And yeah, also I've used yeah. that for other stuff. Uh, yeah. So that's super helpful. Yeah. Um, I am a lot more confident and quick in my chopping skills. Mm. I am truly the master of potatoes, not to pat myself on the back mm. too much, but I truly know how to cook a potato, especially I make a mean garlic mash dad is always raving about it it's so good it's really good we should have put garlic in the mashed potatoes tonight that would have been good i thought about it but like but i it's yeah i I thought i thought of it too too late i I gotcha but i also have grown an appreciation for more vegetables because i used to be very picky about vegetables because mostly we would steam them but i found out that roasting vegetables makes them taste so much better put your veggies in the oven with seasoning but just like put salt pepper maybe some ginger maybe some garlic maybe some lemon zest mm-hmm. we zest our citrus a lot more than we used we to. zest For a sure. lot we, we zest got a, a better lot. zester too because we were using just a microplane and you know i've scraped my knuckles on a microplane one too many times we have one where it's it's more like a peeler it's like a mini peeler that's great love that we have so many more kitchen gadgets now because well, and, dad's very much a right tool for the job kind of person. So we've gotten a lot more gadgets that make things easier. There's some good knives. Like I think, and yeah. that's not me, we, right? We need to sharpen our knives though. Mm-hmm. Well, that's because we've, that's because we've used them so much. We right? use them a lot. I, mean, I have we, a, like a, just a big chef's knife that I use for chopping every vegetable under the sun. Um, I showed this when I came back from uh, Boston last year, uh, Ed, uh, I hang out with Ed Sullivan last year. And he turned me on to this zester, and, and I talked about it last year, but it, your zesting game changes with this tool, right? It's so much easier, and you're not going to scrape your knuckles. Right. Yeah, it, it basically, you know, it's got five holes along the top, and you just pull it down the side, and it zests. You can you can do it a couple times for that, right? And There's it's also got... the thing on the side for if you want a big peel for, like, a garnish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got to. So there's, there's the zest angle. You get a good look at it. And then there's your, if you want to, if you want to garnish, it's got a c- kind of a cutter on the, on the inside of it that you can. I you have can maimed those. myself with a vegetable peeler trying to get a twist <laughs> for a cocktail. You, you have indeed. You really so have. So I have a scar on my finger to prove that no more will I be using a vegetable peeler to get twists for. Drinks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That zest yeah. tool. And I think. 11 bucks like not very expensive and listen zesting is one of those things that is just super underrated and it makes you so fancy and it makes such a difference mm-hmm. especially with lemons yeah to, <laughs> tonight so we were so much more lemon flavor we were making a, a ginger sauce tonight so ginger chicken stock uh, some plum jam um eventually some butter would go on that some water some you know some that that kind and I, I we the other thing the other thing I recommend while I'm saying this is you know you watch those cooking shows and they have all those little bowls go buy some little bowls like just get a bunch of little bowls <laughs> they're not very expensive you don't have to you, like just have a st- and we have a and kind of Sarah started this so she gets the credit for it but we have some big bowls 
and then medium and then small. And they're just, they're within reach. So you can just grab what you need. And if you're zesting, you know, I zest with that, with that tool. And then I take a knife out and chop up that zest to get into small little pieces. You don't have to, like you can, you can leave it in long strips if you want to, it's just, you know, it'd, it's, it'd be just fine that way. And, um, and so then you, you write off the cooking or right off the, uh, the cutter, the, what do we call those things? Mm-hmm. Where you cut the, the, what's the cutting board? No, what's the cutting board? Oh. It's a cutting board. Yeah. Yeah. The cutting board. You, you just, you know, right in the, uh, right in there. And gosh, that's, yeah. you know, I've, I've heard some jokes, I think, and I forget who, which comedian it was. I think it was Jim Gaffigan. Maybe he's like, yeah, I'd cook great too. If all everything was prepared for me. Well, one of the things you kind of get taught with HelloFresh is prepping all the stuff in advance. Mm-hmm. So prep it, have it ready. And then when the cooking comes, you're, you're just, just dumping stuff in bowls of things in things. Yeah. Especially yeah. when you have a, when you have two people to prep also small cutting boards underrated mm. without a rim for scraping things directly into bowls yeah like Especially cutting we cutting use, time yeah we cutting have ginger a, right yeah we have a we have it's basically a slap chop but it's like not the slap chop brand but that thing once you've chopped all the stuff and it's like really fine you don't want that to get caught in any grooves so you just do that on the small cutting board and then you just scrape it directly into the bowl or the pan or whatever yeah yeah it's yeah. Cutting and, and these aren't like, you know, they're, they're talking about, um, it's you like know, a couple Tony says, uh, I feel like his wife still wants an air fryer and, uh, and, and Andrew says he doesn't have space on it. We don't, we don't have an air fryer, brother. In fact, uh, kids came over last night, last night. Yeah. Last night to yeah. make, they brought brats and I ran out of gas. Now, how can you, Sammy, how can you be a We griller? even took the propane tank from the deck heater and it still wasn't enough. <laughs> it was gone. I have, I had run three propane tanks we out failed. of gas, out of gas, gone. Rip us. So I have three. I need to, that's, that's, I have uh, on my, on my list here, uh, you that's know, a my, uh, there's a Menard section that says get three propane tanks, right? Exchange three. Propane propane. Man. So I came in and, uh, you know, put the oven on 450 fan and threw those brats in the oven. You know what? Pretty great. Like, honestly, most things that you need an air fryer for, you could do in an oven, especially if you have a convection and conventional convection Mm -hmm. oven, like combo. We just got that, that oven that has convection on it. And it's pretty sweet. Joe says he had a, this is, this just warms my heart. He says I had an Amazon order going. Now there's a zester added. Yes. Put zest in things. Oh, lime zest in rice is so good. It is great. Yeah. Out of 10, yeah. Or little, little, so heat the pan up little, mm-hmm. little, a little of olive oil and then throw some ginger in there. Yeah. Or Let that scallion ginger. whites. Yeah. Scallion whites. Work. And then That's, at the end, put some zest in there. I said, I, 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 un, I've always underestimated the value of a green onion, like True. the most versatile onion, I think out there, True. you can do so and many things style. with it. Right. Yeah. But yeah. HelloFresh will teach you to love green onions. We should just grow our own, man. Yeah. There's so I, many things that we're like, we need to grow it. We need, we need raised planters, but wood is worth more than gold right now. So. It's coming down. Lumber prices are coming down. Yeah. So they're, they're almost, I don't know if they're back to normal. Um, uh, Joe also says love our air fryer, but difficult to clean. We had Micah on, I don't know, two years ago to talk about our air fryer. Mm -hmm. At this point, we're just going to replace the whole thing. Maybe you have to, um, you can't just replace the basket, which would be nice. Bust out says uh, he loves his air fryer. And uh, um, Tony says, I tried to tell her wire cutter says to standard toaster slash convection oven. Is a, is good, but I don't think she believes me. We we just got those kind of small kind of like toaster ovens at work. Mm-hmm. It's fancy. Like I I I need to learn how to use that thing because toaster it's, ovens have changed since yeah. we had one. We had one like a million years ago, and uh, they're a lot fancier now. Did we? Did we have? Did, yeah, uh, yeah, we that's right. We did have one. Somebody. Yeah. Um, anything uh, I else? Think a regular oven, you can do so many things with. W- one of the things you've you've said a lot lately is you can never underestimate the power of garlic. Like so true. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's my one gripe with HelloFresh is they put a white people amount of garlic in things, or like American <laughs> white people. I'm like, I want an Italian level of garlic. 
like the like think about a grandmother mm. with the thickest Italian accent, how much garlic she would put in something. Yeah. That's how much garlic I want in my food. So HelloFresh, we always keep a couple bulbs of garlic in a bowl off to the side. So anytime HelloFresh is like, here's two cloves of garlic, I'm like, I'm putting four more. Yeah. I just always triple the amount of garlic in a recipe, at least. I, I think I garlic is one of those special items. You Listen, you can get garlic powder, right? You can do yeah. that. But I think garlic it's is one of the, it keeps forever. In yeah. case there's any uh, vampires. Yeah, but yeah. I was just, <laughs> just going to say that. Um, uh, but it, it is, it's one of those, you it just keeps forever. You can yeah. always have it in, you know, we have a little bowl that sits on top of the, Mm-hmm. the wine fridge and it, 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 Oh, let's, let's talk about keeping fruit in the wine fridge. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not as cold as a regular fridge, I think. Cause normally you want to keep citrus out of the fridge. Um, but just to give it a little bit longer life, we've been keeping our citrus in the wine fridge, uh, which is nice. And it's like yeah. right next to our cooking. This station. gives it a little longer. Right. It's just kind of yeah. nice. It's just just a little bit longer. I think we keep the wine, the wine fridge at 54 degrees Celsius or uh, Fahrenheit. And um, so just to, that's a little degrees Celsius is so hot. <laughs> that, that would be that would be a little warm. Joe says uh, fresh garlic or minced. So we keep fresh garlic in the. I won't I won't tell anybody not to do the pre minced garlic, though. I think that's still perfectly good. But because we have the slap choppy thingy mincing garlic yourself is super easy um or you can grate it get a microplane i I know i was talking bad about microplanes earlier but that's just because i'm accident prone if you get a microplane you can just grate ginger into things and you don't have to chop it pro tips but yeah we use the pampered chef right we have the pampered chef uh slap chop is that what it's called Mm -hmm. slap chop yeah it's great it's a great one it's a it's oh okay so they just copied are you saying Pampered Chef copied the slap. Top. I don't know which right. came first. Okay. I just know it's one of those things where the brand name sticks around, like dumpster or Kleenex. Yeah, like Kleenex. Um, aspirin. The um the uh the garlic, I think, you know, we like to mince it on the spot. Like we like to cut the ends off, peel it, and then just put it on a small cutting board and then just mince that thing down. And then add it to whatever, wherever we're doing it just makes, um, <laughs> it just makes the, I don't know what happened to Vince. Bust out. Don't said, send me on a tangent. Cause I know what happened to Vince. <laughs> just look him up on Wikipedia. There's a whole thing about what oh, happened really? to Vince. Okay. Yeah. Bad. I won't go so, on that tangent. Bad thing? I know. Okay. I know. Well, he, there was a lawsuit. There was a oh, thing. Uh, yeah. Those <laughs> unrelated to his unrelated to the infomercials. Okay. He didn't do anything super bad. There's just controversy surrounding him. That's really funny. So I'm not going to go on that tangent. Okay, we'll maybe we'll save that for another uh, another show. Anything else? Um, I think one of the things uh, too that I think really enhances dinner is the pregame cocktail. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, pretty we great to good. get a good cocktail yeah. going. Especially since we have that corner, we rearranged some things in the kitchen, so now we have like a bar, a wet bar tech corner. That's mm-hmm. really nice, mm-hmm. and so we do. We we invent a lot of drinks in the Collison House, which is really fun. We like our own creations, where you can yeah. just go a little bit that way. Yeah, yeah. But all for- of us, me and Dad and Mom, have all created our own signature drinks, which is super fun. Yeah, it is fun. It's fun to have them uh, for various times. Um, I, th- I just kind of think, you know, from a kitchen gadget, I think uh, the automatic wine opener. Oh my was- God, that's a game changer! Isn't it? Every time I have to use like a regular manual bottle opener i'm like man i am spoiled at my parents house with all the gadgets like i feel like a peasant having to use a regular wine bottle opener (laughs) see if i can find this you know it it because um yeah here it is right there it's the first thing that appears on uh on amazon this now this charging base i don't think this is the exact one we have but it's really close it's pretty close so you've got a cutter for the top where you can kind of cut the foil, mm-hmm. pull that off. And then you just set that thing and, and push the bottom Press button the button. and you it goes down. Real tight. Listen, okay. if you have a hard time opening a bottle of wine, you got it. It's just $20. It's $22. It's only $20? Yeah. Man, I know what I'm getting my friends for Christmas. Uh, now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, made by the same company that makes my frother, by the way. So, you know, maybe it's a little loud because <laughs> my frother is yeah. pretty loud. Um. 
but that has been, uh, you know, as we've been drinking wine almost every night with a meal, yeah, uh, which is great, which is the Italian way. Um, uh, pretty We're great not to that have Italian, a wine Italian, but we no. want to be. We like no. to. We like their yeah. food traditions. We make some pretty good garlic bread, though. True. Right. Right. Yeah. That's that's my besides garlic mashed potatoes. I love to make me some garlic bread. Uh, Bust out says I used to work in the wine industry. Can't bring myself to use anything but a traditional opener. Hey, I'm not saying that's you have fair. to. Yeah, what do it if you're if you you're comfortable, you. you do you. Yeah, I like that. Um, it's it is. Uh, but for us, that's been I'm a really my father's good daughter, and I like a gadget. <laughs> what can I say? Been a good. Kind of been a good kitchen gadget, so we've enjoyed that as well. Um, Sammy, you're selling those bags uh, we talked about a little bit earlier. How much do you sell them for? Yes. Uh, 65 each. And how do folks find you on to, to if they were interested in buying one of those, where would they go? I haven't put my shop live yet because I haven't made the listings yet. But in the next couple of days, um, it'll be Knits by Sammy, K-N-I-T-S by S-A-M-M-I-E, Knits by Sammy. Knits by Sammy and be available. I'll also for your... probably put links on my social media. Uh, my Instagram is Sammy Knits and my Twitter is at Sammy Collison. So I'll probably put those on my socials. Yeah, good. And if you if they all sell out, you'll maybe make a few more. In that yeah, podcast? and I might I might do maybe custom ish ones. I'm currently trying to use up my yarn collection rather than mm-hmm. buying new yarn. Mm-hmm. Right. Um. So I'll do custom ish ones where you can choose from my yarn collection. Um. But yeah, if they sell out immediately, then I guess I'll have to make a bunch more. They don't take a super long time to make, so. But maybe somebody, if they were interested in certain colors, they could contact you first to say, yeah. hey, could you make it in this color? And then if you didn't have it, you'd say, well, it's going to be a little bit extra because we've got yeah. to, I've got to yeah, acquire part of that the reason material. They're, they're less expensive than I would normally price them is because I'm not paying for the yarn because I already yeah. own it. It's, 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 uh, it's bonus yarn, as we like to bonus call it. Bonus yarn. Right? Bonus yeah, Jonas. Yeah, people giving me yarn. It's kind of a problem. It's it's <laughs> in the long run, it's the opposite of a problem. But the storage just feels overwhelming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Think about it as a Christmas gift. Like if you wanted a unique gift for someone. I mean, it's made for dice, but it could carry a lot of different things. Yeah. And if you have somebody super cool and pretty unique, you you really design that yourself. There's no. You I designed this myself. One hundred percent. No pattern involved. Nice. Nice. Good. Good. Well, we'll have all in the show notes. I'll put some contact uh, information. Sammy, send me some of that stuff so I can get into the show notes. Uh, We'll have ways for you to find how to get that done. If you made it this far, you're the most engaged and probably the most likely to do something like that. And so we appreciate you uh, doing that for Sammy. And uh, if you don't want to buy, if you just want to see my knitting and crochet escapades, that's what my Instagram is for. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there'll there'll be some more of that kind of ahead and we're going to get her involved some of this in some of the stuff that uh, we're doing here and so we'll get to get some of those things figured out all right sammy thanks for taking an hour and some change tonight to hang out with me it's always good 501 it's kind of like you know we got we got through 500 we got to 501 yeah. good uh it's good I, I i have to tell people we're we're having probably a better time uh, then, then should be allowed by law. Like we have a good That's time true. here this at the California House. Time. I love yeah. guesting on the show. Yeah, so I appreciate appreciate you coming on. Appreciate you hanging out, hanging out with us. I'm just kind of glad. I mean, it's a good time. Uh, also, good time to have you at the house. And so it's always yeah. good. To, you're always you're always a valuable contribution to a lot of the things that we do here. So thanks for just thanks for being great. Uh, I always appreciate that. that. Yeah, good stuff. We'll remind everyone with that. We'll remind everyone that uh, Home Gadget Geeks, of course, powered by Maple Grove Partners, get secure, reliable, high-speed hosting from people that you know and you trust. I got to track down Christian again. He's, uh, just see what he's doing these days. He's staying super busy. Um, if you're interested in getting a hosting plan, they start as little as $10 a month out there. Sammy, if you hit it big, we'll get you something over at Maple Grove Partners to get your own site up and running, whatever whatever we're doing there. Uh, head out to maplegrovepartners.com and, uh, and he can get you set up on just about anything. So don't, you know, don't worry about like, well, I have this kind of special, you know, Christian can do it. No, I was thinking I'd do, nope, Christian can do it. So make sure you're getting out there and getting that done. If you want to join us in the Discord group, and actually this week I let four of my uh, my GTX 1060s go. I just wasn't using them. I hadn't been using them for a while. 
dropped those in the Discord group, and they were gone pretty fast. And so if you want to join us, uh, it's, by the way, if you got something to buy or sell or trade or whatever you're looking for, uh, we can do that with each other and kind of bypass eBay, which is kind of nice. Um, Schoonover does a nice job of posting deals out there. Uh, Kevin uh, posted a, uh, oh man, a Woot had a Ring cameras, the one I wanted to. They had them on sale for 110 bucks, and I didn't pull the trigger and missed it. So I'm still looking. I You hate to see it. Well, Sammy, that's a project. Okay, you've seen this happen to me before. So if I'm going to put the Ring cam in on the shed, I got to run power out there. I can't, um, mm -hmm. solar won't work. It's just too shady out there. So I got to run power. Okay, if I'm running power, then I need, I'm need. i going to need to trench it out there. If I'm going to trench it out there, then I'm going to run cable out there. If I'm getting, you know, it just becomes a, it just becomes an ordeal. So and while I was thinking about, and do I really want to do this? I just let it go. And, uh, but Kevin is posting deals in our, in our discord group all the time. If you want to join us and you should, the average guy.tv slash discord, jump in, let us know, uh, what you're doing. And, and, and maybe that the Ken says, wasn't that bust out in the, and maybe it was, could have been, uh, Kevin posts a lot. Uh, bust out has been posting them as well. So if you want to do that as well. Um, and I, like I said, I sold those, my 1060 cards that I wasn't using. I'll be actually replacing then using that money to buy. And we'll talk about this probably next week. Uh, I got some hard drive. I got some, I finally have entered the world of NVMe and have some uh, NVMe drives coming, a one terabyte drive coming. Worked with Ryan a little bit from, from uh, uh, Think Computers. And said, "Hey, what should I get?" And so he he recommended some things. We'll probably talk about that next week. And I have some super fast, not as fast as it could be, but some pretty fast storage coming. And that'll help me do some things on the crypto side. So we'll talk about that more next week. So appreciate you guys. TheAverageGuy.tv/slash Discord. If you want to leave us a voicemail, head out to HomeGadgetGeeks.com and they'll leave a voicemail. Well, thirty second. We'll play it here on the show. Uh, by the way, uh, leave a comment in Discord or uh, Facebook, and if we can bring it on the show like I did this week for Kyle, Kyle Wilcox, thanks for doing that. Uh, we'll do that as well. Kyle, I hope that helped. And if you, can, Kyle, if you haven't, you know, if you still got some questions, just reach out to me. We'll talk. I'll give you a call. It'd be good to chat with you anyways. If you want to send me an email, if you have any questions on anything, send me an email, jim at theaverageguy.tv. We are live every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern, out here at theaverageguy.tv. Live, been lining up some Patreon folks. Been, uh, Aaron's coming back. Uh, we got Bob and Ryan coming back. So make sure you are joining us Thursday nights. Sammy, thanks for uh, for for being my 501 guest. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, good to have you. And uh, and with that, those who listened live, thanks for coming out. And with that, we'll say goodbye, everybody. Bye.